There's, I think, like a kudu barking at me. Doesn't like me in its territory. My strategy to become the last one standing is I need to get the food that's available. And I need to get as much as I can. I'm the scavenger. I am the dumpster diver of the wilderness. Oh, wow. Mini plums. Everything I can get my hands on, if it's edible, I look around, I eat it. If we're not eating meat or some kind of large chunk of protein, then I need to sort of graze like an animal. In the next few days, we're gonna migrate. So me and Waz plan on keeping our eyes peeled for food. We don't know what's gonna be at the next place. So we gotta get our bodies full of nutrients so we can make it through this. I don't know what I'll find to eat. It could be anything. I am the scavenger, I am the hyena. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Look at this. Big ass kudu. Wow. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Did you smell it? It's a lot of maggots. It's time for Gary Golden to eat. I eat maggots like ice cream and tarantulas like cookies. Got a little neat chandelier. I hung it up because smoking it sort of keeps the bugs off, helps preserve it, prevents rot. Um, Dan, the meat doesn't smell very good on the leg. As the challenge began, Dan and Cheney decided to forego looking for survival items so they could build a sturdy shelter. But they were gifted a share of Sarah and Stephen's Impala meat cache. I got a slice this open and it's got like that greenish tinge. And I can't even like... Really? I think I'm gonna be sick if I sniff it. It's that bad. I mean, you can smell it. Like, is it all rotten? Yeah, you're right. Even the jerky? It smell bad? It smells... Oh, it's green. No, don't say that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it's definitely quite not rotten. good. rotten. That's not good. Dan and I are trying to get ready for our migration in a couple days, and we have the least amount of body fat of anybody, so we really have to get our hands on some meat. Let's just go see if we can find some food. Would like more meat. What you got, Gary? Maggots galore. I'm OK, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to get them to a nice brown texture and flavor. The way this challenge works, the resources can run thin pretty quick. And when you're in our situation, any little bit counts. I like to eat my maggots well done. <laughs> it's a lot of maggots. That's like the size of three fish. I know Gary is pretty well known for eating absolutely anything. It's part of who he is and part of his survival strategy is happy to eat any food, but Gary and I just have a very different style of survival. Wow. If you're not willing to eat maggots, you're not really a survivalist. Mm. You see any good straight pieces for? Oh yeah, for walking sticks? For, yeah, walking sticks. Unfortunately, we have some rotten jerky from the Impala and the migration's coming up. So we're just out trying to get some other protein out here or something into our system before we migrate. Saw something slither down into this rock. Hmm. 
I am a scientist, I'm a researcher, I'm a planner. But I think the biggest thing is being resourceful. Just thinking back to the Amazon, I couldn't believe what I was able to accomplish. So I ate a bunch of tomatoes before uh, starting the challenge. Went to the bathroom for the first time, and there's a bunch of little tomato sprouts coming out of the ground. And I don't think anyone's ever tried to have a garden and have it actually produce food. I couldn't be more proud. <laughs> Every time I'm out here, I let my grubby little inner child <laughs> go full blast into the environment. Pulled the rock back. It's all these potato-y things. I wonder if that's edible. It looks like a potato. Hey, Cheney. Yeah. What'd you find? What does that look like to you? Potatoes. Right? Yeah. I'm suspecting it's this African wild potato I've read about, but I'm I'm not really sure. I mean, it feels like a potato. Looks like a potato, feels like a potato. Must be a potato. So we have to do some tests to determine if it's edible or not. Starts out with uh, opening it, rubbing a little on a sensitive part of your skin. See if it tingles a little bit in each step. See if there's any red flags at each step. Eventually rubbing a little bit in the inside of your mouth, maybe. Then chewing a little bit, spitting it out. I think my lips are tingling slightly, but that doesn't mean it's not cookable. Yeah, usually once you boil a lot of wild foods, the alkaloids are mm -hmm. not an issue anymore. It's crunchy. It's like grainy. It's clearly water and starch storage for this plant. Yeah. It's good, right? It's like a potato mixed with a water chestnut. Yes, that's it. Yeah. It tastes totally edible. Zero red flags, starchy. It's weird, but it obviously is going to help us succeed. This fried up a little bit, these sliced and fried up. Ooh, baby. That makes me feel better about our spoiled Impala. Yeah. It's a huge score. There's so many of them. Oh, you put one on to bake? Yeah. Yep, this is the other half. I'm excited to eat this. Yeah. It smells good. Wow. It's good, right? Mmm. Yeah. It's really good. Despite its appearance, an African wild potato is actually a plant and has no relationship to a regular potato. While these potatoes offer some carbohydrates, they provide 60% less calories than a regular potato. Unlimited supply, and that's just starch and nutrients. We knew there's protein out here, but having starch. these kind of nutrients? Yeah. I know potatoes aren't as sexy as an Impala, but I couldn't have asked for any better advantage in this competition, guaranteed. I'm so glad you chased that lizard. All right, I'll tell you, I'm gonna embrace my inner sticky child. We should probably explore that map before it gets too hot. Yeah, we'll see that. Would like more meat, though. All right, so the plan is to follow this trail down, scout out the map tree, mm -hmm. and then find this on the way back. It's time. It's time. We should be coming up on a T intersection, ideally. We're just out trying to learn our paces. I'll be able to move fast tomorrow, but thorns are going to be a mm -hmm. I'm not known for my land nav skills. They're not great. But Cheney, on the other hand, trains people in it. Is it starting to parallel the river now? This is around 45 paces, and the path followed the right direction. Yeah. So she's been helping me out with pacing and all the kind of skills that we're going to need to move forward in this challenge. So maybe it's up here. Almost there. 37, eight. I think we found it. That's the monkey tree, yeah? Yeah, this is our ravine. So I guess okay. that's it. This is definitely it. The map made sense. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> God. <sighs> Good. We sleep better tonight. <gasps> Look at that <gasps> snake. Holy It's thick. It's a pretty good-sized puff adder. Tell me if it's venomous, like, right oh, away. Oh, yeah, that's venomous. The puff adder is a highly venomous viper, responsible for more deaths than any other snake in Africa. It is extremely aggressive, with large fangs, and when disturbed, can strike its target with sudden rapid accuracy. Quick. I know, I'm going. I don't want to spook it. Oh, I see him now. Move slow. Got it. Woo! Woo! That's some meat. <sighs> Making up for it. Yeah, man. Check that out. 
<laughs> oh yeah, Dan. Wondering where they all been hiding. Dan, you're my hero. Here, bring it over here so I can whack its head off. Cool. That is venomous as Oh yeah, it is. All of these glands right here. Yeah. There's this big old puff adder. It's like three feet long, just scooting along the ground. Just like that, we have our first protein score in this challenge. <laughs> big in its stomach. There's a giant rat in the middle of its stomach. Now, I've eaten plenty of snakes, but I've never eaten something out of the gut of a venomous snake. I wonder if the snake was moving pretty slow. Have you ever eaten something that was in a venomous snake's stomach? Can't say that I have. Technically, it should be safe to eat it, even if there's venom inside of it. We have a safe to eat. We'll throw them in. Should be, right? Oh, just never, boy. Just never done it. Can you see where he bit it? No, I ripped its skin up in there. I don't see where it bit it. And I mean, for the meat I've you're gonna get off a mouse, is it worth it? Maybe not. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. I don't know if you can cook venom out of a mouse, but for the size of that thing between the two of us, it wouldn't give us really anything anyway, so I don't really think it's worth the risk. I'll stick it over here. Now, venom, I'm a scientist. I know venom is different than poison. Theoretically, you can ingest it just fine. It shouldn't be a problem. But it's something I've never done. And without being able to just triple check that I'm correct, there's that 1% chance that I'm wrong. And I, I, that's not a chance I want to take out here. Like a little snake stew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is that about half where my fingers are? Um, yeah. Really cool. Honestly, it feels pretty good to kill something out here. There's more meat than I thought. Oh, there's a little chicken. Here, pick one. Ah, uh, I'll go with this part. Good choice. And it feels good to get a little more food. So that was a huge score. Okay, that's some meat. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. Nice little puff adder. Mm -hmm.